A boundary is a structure that determines what will exist and what will not. That's from Henry Cloud in his book, Boundaries for Leaders. Cloud also goes on to say, you will get what you create and what you allow, as well as good boundaries. Both those that help us manage ourselves and lead others always produce freedom, not control. Cloud also talks about what the boundaryless life can look like when he said, in the same way the brain cannot function without the executive functions in place, it also cannot work if it is drowning in stress hormones. I'm Chad Brooks, and this is the latest episode of The Productive Pastor. What's up, my friends? Chad Brooks here. Second episode of Productive Pastor Podcast, Season 1, 11 Strategies Against Time-Bound Resistance. And we're here to talk about the power of time audits today, about what happens in our life when we draw boundaries around things and when we are aware of how we are spending our time. And Henry Cloud's Boundaries for Leaders is a fantastic conversation about things as a leader that we don't often talk about. And one of the biggest ones is just simply drawing lines around what you should be doing and what you should not be doing. This is going to be a beautiful, amazing, fantastic conversation today. You know, as a result of the last few years, I've been on a journey from being a workaholic to someone who is more mindful of my own health and how my vocational life is affected by the way that I do work. So I'm not here as some sort of productivity expert, but just another pastor alongside of you in the journey. Before we pop off into this content, just a couple of housekeeping things to make you aware of. First is this, you can find the show notes at revchadbrooks.com slash ppp slash zero zero two. Second, we've got a fantastic community of pastors. I think we crossed over 900 this week over at Facebook, the Productive Pastor Community. So the link to that's in the show notes. We'd love to have you come hang out there with us. And the last is this. I have a companion workbook to go alongside of each and every episode in this season. And you can find the link to that in the show notes. It's $30, but it is absolutely chock full of actionable content that we're talking about. If the podcast is the what and the why, the workbook is absolutely the how. So years ago, when recovering from a pretty life-altering medical emergency, that's actually the three-year anniversary today as I'm recording this. Uh, So after a pretty major medical emergency, I was spending time reading the book of Jeremiah, and I hadn't planned on reading Jeremiah, but the daily office reading uh, over that cycle just decided that I needed to be reading Jeremiah. And one morning, I found myself reading chapter 23, and was reading about the condemnation of the false priests and the prophets. And it's not just a condemnation, but instead it's something that really should make all of us who call ourselves followers of Jesus, but also ministry leaders, really intentionally focused on who we were made to be. So it made me run down this rabbit hole of understanding around the biblical concepts of truthfulness, and worthlessness, and all the other related topics. And inside of that investigation, I found myself in Romans chapter 8, and it's a little bit more familiar territory than Jeremiah 23. And it was when I was reflecting through this chapter, I was specifically reading and praying through Romans 8, 28, that verse that many of us know off the top of our head, and we know God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are also called according to his purposes for them. Now, I don't know about you, but I've read that verse plenty of times, and I probably focused a lot more on the first two parts, the whole God causes good things and those who love God. But I didn't think that much about the last part, the whole according to his purpose for them bit. But it was this last part that really stuck out. And for the last three years, I found myself on this deep identity journey. And the last year, 2021, has been the real, the tough side of it, the side that required counseling, uh, the side that required spiritual direction, the, the side that required uh, medication and antidepressants and a host of other things. 
But so much of it in the middle of all that was this deeply intense spiritual journey of me working out my own broken ideas of work and why I work and what work does for me. And then finding the whole ideas about the purpose and about the call of God and how we willfully step into it. What does that mean to be called according to his purpose for us uniquely? So we start this episode with this question. How are you learning to have agency over your schedule in order to accomplish the uniqueness of your call. Earlier this year, I was in a group training retreat for the company I coach with, and we had this exercise that was walking through Walter Brueggemann's Spirituality of the Psalms. I'll have that book linked in the show notes. But in this book, Brueggemann structures three movements that the Psalms help us navigate through. Uh, It's a movement of order, a movement of disorder, and a movement of reordering. So as I'm sitting on this Zoom meeting with other pastors and coaches and ministry leaders from across the country, I'm sketching out things as I talk, as I always do. And I began to think through the idea of what throws us into seasons of disorder and what has to happen for us to come out of disorder and then enter into a reordered state. And so much of just that idea lines out the last couple of years for every single person on this world. But I was thinking about it specifically with me and my ministry, and at the time going through massive transition, still going through massive transition now. But I really dug into this idea, and this is what I discovered. We move from order to disorder when something is controlling us. And control can be anything with the power and the influence to direct behaviors or the course of events. It can be another person, it can be a situation, it can be our own broken decision-making patterns and all those sorts of things. But agency is the thing that moves us from disorder into reorder. And agency is an action or intervention that produces a particular effect. And far too often, we fail to realize that when things seem off, even in the tiniest way, that we have the ability to discern and change it. And this seems different, but it absolutely affects our productivity and our ability to do good, healthy work. But I also think it's tough for us to do this without an understanding of how we spend our time because of this. Unknown time is the playground of chaos. I'll say that again. Unknown time is the playground of chaos. And how often do we not know what we are doing? You remember the question we asked earlier in the episode, how are you learning to have agency over your schedule in order to accomplish the uniqueness of your call? So time audits, the power of a time audit. And a time audit is actually relatively simple. All it is is us making the decision for a length of time, for a week or two weeks. We're just going to write down the things that we do. Because data without decisions equals disorder. This is how we find ourselves in this place of chaos when things are controlling every decision we make. And so many times we don't realize that the things that are controlling us are just us not proactively putting boundaries around what we're doing. And that really starts with our schedule. We can find out so many things by going into our schedule. If data without decisions equals disorder, then we realize that data shows distinctives that lead towards better discernment. None of us like the term audit. We hear the term audit and we get terrified. We're used to being portrayed in a negative sense. We're either audited by the IRS or we use the term to simply mean turning in information and we get stressed because we think we're going to find something bad or somebody else is going to try to find something bad. And how many times are we terrified that something's going to turn up in this audit that will send us into a tailspin? Now, for me personally, who I am, I feel like I have a mission to get people to learn that data is not just our friend, 
but it's something that is strategically useful for us. Remember I said data shows distinctives that lead towards better discernment. So before we jump into the hyper-practicals about time audits, what I want you to ask you to do is go over to the show notes, revchadbrooks.com slash PPP slash 002 and download my free day sheet resource. This has been the oldest and biggest practice of Productive Pastor, and it has stood the test of time. It stood the test of my own hustle journey. Um, So we're going to use this tool throughout the episode, but make sure you go and you grab that and use that as we sit down to look at the power of a time audit in your own individual ministry. What is a time audit? Well, I'm here to tell you what a time audit is, but a time audit is a fantastic exercise where we are able to see what's actually going on. That When we feel like things are off the rails a little bit, for whatever reason, a time audit has the ability to show us and to see what things are. You know, time audits are a tool of self-awareness. They help us to see our natural patterns. Then it allows us, once we see these natural patterns, to create healthier rhythms and patterns. And it also it serves as a tool of quick recalibration, but it's also a defense against incursions of unhealth. I'm kind of always time auditing. I've picked that practice up over the last few years, and so it's to what level am I going to be intense on my time audit. But time audits also allow us just to be curious in seasons of disorder to help us see where we need to make decisions to move into a new state. Time audits really are how we determine agency. We go back to episode one and being personally aware and all the things we learn about ourselves And once we have a a decently firm understanding of that, when we see time audits, we're able to to understand how our schedules work and how our times work and how long can we go. It's, it's, It's just a massive exercise in clarity in the workbook in this module. We go through actually three levels of time auditing as well as ask a bunch of different questions along the lines of those draining, dealing, and developing tasks and how we Uh, spend time doing that or how we don't spend time during that. But time audits are just a massive tool of self-awareness. And it's how we determine our agency. It helps us see what is controlling us and what we can actually control. There's an article, and I have it linked in the show notes, from Harvard Business Review years ago that is a, 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 the study that was done with people that were self-identifying if they had a good day or a bad day. And what was so wild, you can go read the article, but the biggest indicator of having a good day is where they felt like they accomplished something. And sometimes in time audits, we realize that we are spinning our wheels for days and never accomplishing anything. And it goes back to that whole according to our purpose. God did not call you into ministry to accomplish nothing. And when we're in funk seasons and and we're trying to figure out what's going on. And so we take advantage of the time audit and realize that, wow, we've not really, like we've not gotten anything done. We're just like living inside of those, those dealing tasks and it ends up just being really, really crummy. So that, that HBR article is a fantastic tool. I love it. I talk about it constantly. I have talked about it for years. But this is how we use this sheet, okay? Now, go download it from the show notes. If you don't have it yet, it's going to sign you up to the email list, but I don't hassle you, trust me. But go get that sheet because this is what this looks like. You'll see it's pretty simple. In fact, you don't really need the sheet. The sheet just makes it easier to do. And I have the digital version. You can print it out or you can drag it into your uh, tablet, whatever, however you do that. But this is what's going on. So I like to sit down at the beginning of the day and just do a quick sketch out in black ink of what my plan for the day is, what are the couple things I want to I want to take care of, that sort of a thing. And then throughout the day, in blue ink, I write down what my actual schedule is. If I'm interrupted by someone or if I interrupt myself, if I just kind of zone out and get on YouTube for 20 minutes, I literally, in 30-minute increments, write down every single thing I did. And there's also some stuff on the side of that. There's There's instructions and there's more conversation inside of that packet, so you can see what that's like. But what happens is over the course of a week or so, you can begin to build out just this natural baseline of this is what you do when you work unintentionally. And just simply seeing what happens, so you start saying, hey, I'm being interrupted a lot. Um, What can I do about that? Or, hey, wow, I'm spending a massive amount of time 
taking care of this task. And this task is something that really is not fun, not healthy, that sort of a thing. They just, the time audit just brings all of those things up to the surface and allows us to figure out where we are actually spending our time. And it goes back to that, that those things I talked about earlier of worthlessness, of, of identity, of all of it. And there's some of these things that we can't control. As pastors, especially serving normal-sized churches, sometimes you just got to plunge the toilet. So let's take it in even a step further than this. Let's go back to that idea of order, disorder, reorder. Let's talk about control and agency because once we get in, once we have our time zone done for a few weeks, we have that baseline. We've asked ourselves these questions that we just talked about. We really can jump into like a high level of functioning by first of all asking questions about control. So, what am I been doing, or how have I been spending my time, or what are the ways that my time audit is revealing things that are not under my control? And once you, you start ra- asking those out, you can just keep on asking yourself more questions. I love this model called the five whys. Uh, and there's an idea of asking, after asking five whys, just Google it. I'll put a link in the show notes if I can find it. But you'll find clarity. So why can I not control this? Uh, why can I not control this yet? It might be asking yourself a question, okay, this is a thing that is out of my control. It's affecting me. I'm spending tons of time on this. Is this something I can lead someone else or potentially lead myself out of? We can ask ourselves questions about how did uh, how did this get me into a state of disorder? There's all sorts of questions. Just really run through what's and why's and how's, that sort of a thing. But then we also move into this. What do I have agency over in my schedule, especially if we're seeing things that we're not satisfied with? So we can get to the point we ask ourselves, what decisions do I need to be making right now? Or also the places of honesty. How am I or how can I greater align my time to what my call might be? Or how can I create growth, or especially in the idea of developing time inside of this? Our personal awareness is going to end up stacking inside of the time audit to help us understand what does it mean for us to move forward. So the time audit. I'm telling you, one of the best things that I have ever built into my own practices And like I said earlier in the episode, it's something that has stood the test of time. There was a reason I used time audits back in the day, and it was in a way I was just trying to find more time and more focus to cram more things into the day. And over the last few years, what I've seen is that time audits really are a way for me able to see what are the boundaries that I need to be placing around myself and around those that I lead. We use this sheet all throughout my office, actually. You know, in the very beginning of the episode, I'd read that quote from Henry Cloud where it said, a boundary is a structure that determines what will exist and what will not exist. And here's the thing. There's no leadership without self-leadership. And if we're simply running around like chickens with our head cut off, just kind of going amok, 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 then everything else is going to kind of look like that. And I think the time audit is the perfect thing. And if you bought the workbook, which I know I keep talking about, but it really is just chock full of hyper actionable stuff. We'll see that the practice of time auditing runs throughout the entire workbook as a clarifying exercise. So consider going over the show notes, revchadbrooks.com slash PPP slash 002. Grab that link to that workbook. There's also a link in there to an article that I found that's about chronotypes. And a chronotype is this whole idea that there are certain ways that we're naturally wired to be productive at certain different times of the day. Super, super interesting is your time auditing and trying to wonder where did my energy go to. Also, remember, we got the Productive Pastor community over on Facebook chock full of really, really cool ministry leaders having a lot of super fun conversations. And if you're not part of that yet, I encourage you just to go over there. It is a lot of fun. One of my favorite parts about Productive Pastor, we keep the party going over there. 
But I'm Chad Brooks. It is a privilege to be the host of not just this podcast, but this entire community. If you're digging stuff with the podcast, I would love to hear from you. You can follow me on all the socials at RevChadBrooks.com. And I'll be back in the next episode where we're talking about rhythms are stronger than goals, something I absolutely, completely believe in. And I'll see you in that one.